good morning, everyone, and thanks very much, John. I've, you've given me plenty to think about there, just in terms of uh, the economic bounce back and the, the cultures and the, the the opportunity, I suppose, if uh, we can call it as, as such, of this time to think about how we do things and the extent to which we then get a V-shape in our economic performance versus a U-shape or a dreaded L-shape where output falls and, and stays low. But from my perspective, uh, it's important just to think about where we were pre-coronavirus, pre-COVID-19, because we were coming into this year with a, a real strength in the economy. Uh, the, the recovery had been exceptionally strong for, for a number of years. Um, forecasters were suggesting that uh, the record employment figures that we had seen in the last number of years would continue into uh, at least 2021, 22 um, also. And it was just two, you know, two short months ago, we were, as economists, being asked questions about full employment and tightening labour markets and overheating economies. So for us as a sector, um, not known for covering ourselves in glory during shocks, this one has come as a massive shock um, and really has started to impact very dramatically and very quickly. But I think it's important to, to make that point that it is a hopefully a temporary cold storage type shock that we'll bounce back from quickly uh, and then it's important to also note that the issues that we face going forward uh, before the coronavirus issues came to the fore like Brexit the uncertain terms of trade uh, global trade wars they were all there uh, before this um, and likely will be there after this so it's important for, for economic policy makers and practitioners that we, we don't lose sight of the fact that as we headed into 2020 uh, we were we were looking at a growing but slowing economy. Uh, consumers were perhaps running out of steam a little bit and that the, the labour market was uh, performing exceptionally well but was maybe starting to show signs of uh, running out of steam a little bit too. But if we uh, take that context and park that and move into I suppose just where we are with the, the current shock and I suppose the, this is a very fast moving picture uh, but the, the, the Immediate labour market contractions were, were being felt most acutely in, in the likes of retail and, and hospitality and trade. And retail excellence were suggesting that you know, 140,000 jobs have been lost already in the past two weeks. And in a, a, a very bleak scenario, we're suggesting that 200,000 could follow. Now, bear in mind that there are now you know, movements to protect jobs and furlough jobs and you know, use, use job protection schemes. So this is very much a, a worst case scenario, we hope. Uh, but there was an expectation there that about 14, 15% of jobs could be lost over the coming period. Um, moving on to the next slide, just to show some of the context as to where this was, was being, was, was impacting most. Um, and the, the importance, I suppose, as well of our tourism and hospitality sectors who really were at the forefront of bearing the brunt of this and you know, we were getting very immediate stories of flights being cancelled uh tourists cancelling um and just to put that in context you know in 2019 on average the visitors that were coming to to ireland of which there were many many you know, tens of millions um were spending about 472 euro per trip so that was giving the economy a 5.1 billion pound boost per annum through that expenditure and this is so unknown but we do have some early readouts of, of the potential losses here so you know even St Patrick's Day alone and the Dublin parade that uh, is estimated to have lost in terms of revenues over 70 million of euros so when we look uh, through the rest of the year and our hopes are that you know the likes of, of our sector and our construction even can bounce back quickly this sector is probably one that, that will take a little bit longer to, to come to come back out of, of recession. And uh, just to move on to the next slide, just shows how reactive and how fragile confidence is when it comes to consumers and the, the mood of consumer. Um, obviously now with, with closures that this will be reflected, you know, it would be a hundred percent down. But before restaurants were being told to close, you know, the consumers have started to vote with their, their fears. Uh, and the, the bookings were down dramatically across the world. Uh, people were just starting to, to realise that it was easier to socially isolate or, or safer. Um, and so much of the economy is driven by confidence and how people feel about making a, an expenditure decision. So when it comes to an invisible 
virus that, that nobody knows how how and when it is and, and where they're how it maybe could be transmitted it really drives a a wedge into people's uh confidence about making making those spending decisions and we've seen that very much in the, the hospitality impacts um as i say the, the government is is moving now forward with schemes and protections so the hope is that when this passes and, and it will pass that that uh, that very rapid dip starts to ramp up quickly but again you're you're dealing with people's uh, confidence and people's fragile confidence at that so the extent to which this starts to bounce back really is is to be determined if we just click on one then we, we we can look just how i suppose in a broader economic sense that that lack of confidence uh, really manifested itself in in a, in a sell off you know globally stock markets were down dramatically and the the ISEC there is as well down you know by a third since the start of march so you know a, a big reaction to uncertainty and a big sell off in shares so um i suppose that sets a bit of context as to where we are during this um you know a number of challenges at, at play for many many sectors you know many of us are now trying to work from home that's working well from the the anecdotal evidence i have and on the, the people we're, we're engaging with and our client base but there's obvious challenges around that in terms of how, how effective and how productive people can be so you know it's not just a case of business as usual for the next while and that starts to feed into where the economy is heading so if we if we move on just to start thinking about where the economy might go and really it is guesswork you know there's i put a table up there just for a little bit of tongue-in-cheek two researchers authored that and came up with seven different scenarios as, as to where the economy could go for a number of uh, a number of uh, major economies so you know tongue-in-cheek uh, taking a, a pop at my, my own profession uh, we, we really are poking in the dark here as to, to where this would go. The hope is that, as I said at the start, that this become, this is a V-shape when we plot GDP, that it, it dips quickly and bounces back quickly. Um, that's not guaranteed, but we hope that with the initiatives that are take, being taken by governments uh, across the world, that there will be people who can just pick up from where they left off. And as John mentioned in, in his, you know, we can we can use this time, I suppose, to do the work that we have in the books but also plan for when we bounce out of this so can we be more effective at, at some of our things that we do can we do can we be more productive and bounce back quicker so from our perspective uh, the extent of the decline really is anybody's guess we, we're referring to it now as, as going into limp mode which is a, 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 a you know a sense that when you're you know, modern cars now when they get ill they sort of will will get you home just about and we feel that that the economy is is in that sort of uh situation at the minute and that's prompting the likes of the Inter international labor office to um sorry could you go back one slide there uh that's prompting the likes of the the ILO to th to think that there could be 25 million jobs lost worldwide here um and as i say that that risk really is that we don't par up as quickly as we par down um and really you know are there are there then bigger factors that come into play here so you know do now do now problems become forever damage to the economy that that's a massive risk that we face uh, and that's that's one for us all to to think about how we we don't let that happen how we try to maintain as much economic activity as we can and do, do more about this uh quickly uh but there are questions i suppose around does it alter consumer behavior fundamentally so do we move towards more localized offer and and do supply chain shorten having having had decades of you know, global su supply chain um, patterns emerging and and how that has really benefited economic growth do we now as a as an economy think about do we need to crunch the economy a little bit into more of a localized setting and from a consumer perspective do we change our patterns do we go out less or do we come out of this so relieved that we've been released back into the community that we actually go out on a massive bender for the next number of months and, and spend all our money on restaurants and hospitality so um lots of different behavioral type issues to to focus on uh, in terms of how we emerge from this i suppose the message from from any of us who are working in, in economics is that the economy will come back it it always does i suppose there's, there's plenty of evidence for many many recessions and many many bounce backs how that comes back and when that comes back is very uncertain but there is hope 
and there are still opportunities. 